Welcome to Sacred Rebels Podcast, where we discuss life after trauma as we question societal norms and shatter stigmas. Are you a woman who longs for a sense of community and understanding? Well, stick around. There is a seat for you here. This is your host, Tay. And co-host, Amy. And we're just two best friend millennial moms and entrepreneurs navigating life and motherhood while on a spiritual healing journey. We don't do surface level, and we're definitely not your typical moms, so let's dig deep. We plan to cover it all and take you behind the scenes as we share our personal experiences, learn more about the holistic side of healing, and introduce all the incredible humans we've met along the way. Join us as we share the good, the bad, and the ugly side of healing. We hope to help you step into your power. Thanks so much for listening. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Sacred Rebels. Tonight we have Amna Khan. Really excited to have her. Um, Amy is going to introduce her after we start off with our big deep breath. All right. Start one hand on the heart, one hand on the belly. If that feels good, take a big breath in through the nose. Fill up, lift up. And then exhale, let that shit go. I'm so excited to impromptuatively have <laughs> Amna on. She actually took my class right before this, and she's been coming to the studio for a couple of weeks, and we've just really connected over a lot of things, and she's going to start having some workshops here with me at the studio, and I'm very, very excited about all the different things that we um, are going to talk about. But Amna is a Theta healer, and we're just going to listen and talk and talk about the workshops and what yeah. she has to offer and a little bit about her story because you know that's what we do so go ahead we she also chose a card obviously yes. we always start with a card so she did pick one did it relate and did you connect with it do you feel like yeah definitely so first of all I just want to say thank you for the invite and um I'm also going to thank myself as well that I said yes, even yes. though I'm sweaty. We just finished a class <laughs> and I thought, why not? And I've been wanting to start my own podcast for the longest time. And it's just, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Shaming myself, which is what's come up in this. And I just thought, you know what? I had the most beautiful, blissful class. I just felt like I was transported somewhere else. <laughs> it was a beautiful sound journey to finish it off. And I just felt so in the zone and so open. We did a lot of heart opening stuff. And I'm like, I'm, yeah, okay, no resistance. Um, so I'm so grateful for that like it just all lined up and it had to be this way and unfold in this way so how divine is that it's perfect I love so it. perfect I love it so yeah. much yeah so the card that I pulled is the word wants to be written so mm. yes um, I don't know here I'll show thank you Ta. I think we had this one a couple of weeks ago this, this seems to be a really good one I want to hear what you pull from this yeah, so um, what I sort of got from it was that it's about like our cre creativity, right? We have this creative process. We have all, um, we all do. We all have something to offer to the world, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And it gets layered and blocked by shame. And so I really, those are the parts that really sort of stood out to me and shame has not allowed me to be my full self mm. I have put on masks my whole life and there was a like earlier this year I was asking myself like do I even really know who I am oh my god do I so I, relate do I even really know like I've been you know um my background's actually a school teacher and uh, I did all the things that I thought I was supposed to do and trying to please my p parents and get their approval and just like that uh, hunger for love, hunger for praise, hunger for attention. Mm. And in the pursuit of this love that wasn't reciprocated the way that I needed, I haven't really cultivated my inner love. 
I haven't been able to cultivate what is it that Amna wants? What is it that lights her up? What is it that she wants to do and create in the world? And I'm only just starting to ask these questions to myself. Mm. So that's what I got out of this. I love that (laughs) so much. And it's so true. Like, it's your word that needs to be written. It's it's yours. Nobody else's. You get to choose. Yeah. And I'm sure there's so many people. I know I'm just evolving and stepping into that. And I'm 37. You know, I'm finally yeah. knowing, like, I'm living my dharma. I'm doing what I'm intentionally supposed to be doing. I'm using my words. I'm using my voice. I'm feeling empowered in who I am. No matter what has happened in the past, no matter what decisions that I've made that have led me to this point, every single one has led me exactly this point. And I feel the most whole on my own and like doing this work and living in my dharma than I ever have ever in my life. Yeah. I love that. And it took a long time and it's still, it's like ever evolving, right? It's like ever like you like find it and I'm like, oh yeah, I love sound. And now I'm like, oh my God, I'm now adding sound and breath. And now, you know, I'm like doing these other things and it's like, it's like evolving, but it's all like stacking on top of each other, not just like a different thing. It's like an evolution of the same thing Mm. that's filling my soul. I love that. Mm. Yeah. And I think, you know, I've I've also just been um, the more I learn and I sort of went on like this theta healing journey and I can you explain to the listeners what theta healing is because I feel like a lot of people will be like theta healing. Yeah, I was also one of those people. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So I'll tell you a little bit about my story. So, um, at the time, so I was a school teacher, wasn't looking for healing, didn't think that I needed healing. You know, my life is, you know, I've got my, everyone's got their baggage. This is just mine. This is normal. Um, and nothing wrong with me. It's other people, you know, <laughs> I've just got some assholes and whatever in my life. It's just the card like that I was dealt. And um, I meet this woman at like a footy game. So I used to play a lot of sport back home in Australia and she was a friend of a friend and I asked her like, what do you do? And she's like, I'm a theta healer. And same thing is like, what is that? Yeah. And she said, I help people rewire their subconscious minds. Uh, re- I don't think she said that. So I, I help people rewire their brains. And I was like, how do you do that? Like, do you have to physically cut open the head? Is it surgery? <laughs> like, I didn't even meditate at that point. Yeah. I was like, yeah. what does that mean? Oh, my gosh. And it just, like, it was mumbo jumbo, and it went totally over the top of my head. And so it's really hard to explain what is it and, you know. So anyway, she said, I'll give you a session. You can experience it, and then, you know, you'll you'll know for yourself what it is. And at that time, uh, I was going through a breakup, like months had passed, months and months. I was miserable. I was malicious. I Mm. was nasty. And people think I'm joking when I say this, but if I could have run him over with my car, (laughs) I would have. Not even a chance. Feel that, girl. I get it. (laughs) I was in this relationship. I gave and gave and gave. He took and took and took. And then he broke up with me. And I was like, are you kidding me? How long ago was this? Oh, it was years ago now. Like, um, yeah, quite a few years ago. I'll have to do the math. I'll probably tell you the wrong number (laughs) if I try to guess. But um, it was, I was just, I couldn't believe, I couldn't get over it. Um, So every night I went to bed and I just thought about how much I hated him. And every morning I woke up and I was just consumed with hate. Mm. And, And I just... Oh, it really took up so much space in my mind and I'd go to work and I had a smile on my face and I was dying on the inside. Mm. I really was. And I've, you know, seen counsellors and psychologists in the past and, you know, I didn't really like talking about my stuff and I'd go there, uh, I'd talk about my past and, you know, my childhood abuse and everything and I'd be a mess, I'd be in tears I'd leave the office, I'd be in tears, I'd be sitting in my car in tears. A week later, I'm I'm in that funk and that energy and no one could really help me move that. And so then there's this girl who's a theta healer I've never heard of 
and she's asking me about this and I'm like oh god do I have to talk about it again (laughs) I was like whatever and so I did and I told her about the relationship and I'm bawling my eyes out and I remember at the end of the or towards the end she's just like she closes her eyes and she's like that was really powerful did you feel that and I looked at her and I thought piss off like you didn't even touch me (laughs) like what I I thought she was scamming me I was like do I look like a fool to you no I didn't say that but I was thinking that in my head she knows I'm vulnerable I'm emotional and she's just taking advantage right so I thought the session was garbage (laughs) I really did, honest. And she was younger than me, so I'm like, what could she teach me? Mm. Anyways, I leave there and I say, whatever this theta healing crap is, never going to do it again. It was a waste of my life. I want my hour back, right? Whatever. I leave. And I'm from a small town called Wagga Wagga in Australia. And inevitably, I run into my ex. And you know when you see someone who triggers you and your heart races and your whole body's just like didn't happen I was like huh am I asleep like what's going on I was like ah that's what she said that she did for me and I was like no this is not possible like it's just a coincidence everyone gets over their ex right today was just the day and it's just a coincidence I had this session or whatever it was with this woman And um, because I was so used to that, I actually went out of my way to get into his space, looking for a bite, like right into, and he was treating me differently too. I was like, what, like, is this black magic? Like, what is this? That's the only thing that made sense to me. I was like, it must be witchcraft, right? (laughs) (laughs) Has to be. So anyways, this thing that I said I would never do again, I go back to her a second time. I'm like, this time I'm going to actually watch what she does. You know, I'm not going to be like, you know, looking at the wall and like distract. I'm actually going to focus and um, didn't pick up on anything. And it was just more shifts and changes. And it was, it was like magic. People started treating me differently and talking to me differently. I felt the same. Mm. I didn't feel different. I didn't even close my eyes in the sessions. I didn't, she didn't even take me through a meditation or anything. I just sat there. You know, she asked me a bunch of questions, which I didn't know, like, what she was doing, what the theta healing technique is. And um, it was just so powerful. And I was like, wow. I don't know what it is. I don't even care at this point if it's black magic. It's I'm in. Yeah. You know, and I said, book me in every Friday for the rest of the year. I don't care what you charge. Um... I I need more of this. And the third session I booked with her, I wrote down every teeny time. So someone who didn't even have any problems, right? There's nothing wrong with me. I found everything. And I wrote about three pages worth of stuff, big things, little things. And I took it to her and I was like, like, close your eyes. I don't know what you do. Like, fix <laughs> Take it. it. Here fix am I it. problem. I made your job easy. And she kind of looked at me. She's like, that's not how it works. I'm like, what? can I sleep over? Like, I mean, <laughs> I'm willing whatever it takes. And once a week was not enough for me, you know. I wanted to work on it all day, every day. When you find something. Yeah, that Like, works. I was in misery for months. Yeah, I feel that. And then she just took it away. Like, what is that? And so I decided from that point, you know, I can't wait on her. Uh, You give a man a fish, you know, the Chinese proverb, you feed him for a day. Mm. You teach a man to fish, you feed him for his lifetime. Mm. So I'm like, whatever this is, I've got to learn it. And so I went all over. I've been to Bali. I've been to London. I've been to Japan. I've been like real and all over Australia as well. Incredible. Like just going deep with Theta Healing because it changed my life. And um, I all of a sudden was willing to look at my problems. I was all of a sudden willing to talk about the abuse from my father and the fear that I lived in and the shame, you know. Mm. And I was prepared because there was relief, Mm. you know. And what I've come to sort of understand, like um, there was a period I sort of had of a bit of a love-hate relationship with Ada and... um, it was so amazing and everything was going good 
And then I was like, oh, I'm still having bad days and there's still shit happening to me. Mm. And so sometimes what I like to tell people, like it's amazing, but healing's never a place that you arrive. Mm -hmm. It's continuous. Forever. Yes, it is. Because shit is constantly happening to us. And, you you know, you were talking about, like, you know, seeking relief. And I used to say this thing when I was in the 12-step program, like, a relief-seeking missile. Like, I was yep. literally that. And, like, we all are that, right? Like, we just are seeking relief in everything. And it doesn't have to be drugs and alcohol. It could be gambling. It could be Netflix, binging on Netflix. It could be the gym. It could be food. Like, literally... Yep. Anything that we are seeking relief from outside of ourselves is literally only going to make it worse. We're going to continue because then that relief, that whatever outside thing that you're seeking, is it's like a void. It's like a bottomless, empty list, mm. disgusting, like I, now I'm going to add this on because this is – then it's just like this endless fucking void of outside yep. shit. Always. And until you can turn it inside – And have a deeper understanding and whatever healing modality that you figure out works for you, right? And, like, maybe it's all of them. (laughs) A little mix of everything. All of it because that's how I am. I'm like, wait, this works and that works and this story works and that breath work works and yoga works and sound works. And I'm like, give it to me all because that's, you know, all or nothing, right? Yeah. (laughs) That's like who we are and that's the other thing people want to find what is that one thing that'll fix me Mm. and that's that's the wrong approach to have about it and as I said like for me it was transformative you know and then I've met people who just like yeah I don't really rate it it's like what do you mean this is the best thing that ever happened to me and you don't love it and what I've come to discover is there's many paths And just because I love it today, I also go through different seasons. And what works for me today might not work for me tomorrow. Mm. And so there's a variety of different modalities. But at the end of the day, you need to trust your own inner compass. So even before working with me or taking my classes, I always tell people, you know, my story is great. You can you can be really magnetized and relate. However, I might not be your teacher and only you can discern that. So meditate on it. Is this modality in the highest and best for me? And is this the teacher for me? Because we all teach differently. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. So what are some of the like questions or things that happen during a Theta healing session? So there's a digging technique that um, happens. So um, uh, what are the questions? I don't know. It just depends. So we do like it's a meditative practice. You want to access the theta brainwave. And there's a list of questions that you ask intuitively as opposed to like a sheet that you look Mm. off, right? And anything that... I like to draw this sort of table for people. So you have the um, negative experience, whatever that is that you're having. And under the negative experience, there are gifts or lessons or positive things. So even though I had a, a terrible time in that breakup, it brought me one of the best things ever. And that was theta healing, mm. which changed the trajectory of my life. And so he might be an asshole and all of that, but he brought me the best thing ever yeah. and brought me to find myself. And in that moment, it's really hard to see the gifts. Yeah. So there's there's gifts. And then on the other side, there is uh, the positive, the thing that you want, but you don't have. And under that, there are a whole heap of fears. And we know that there are fears there because like who we are, right? We have like 60 to 80 trillion cells in our body. voltage right literally an energy that is what we're putting out what we put out we bring back so technically based on who you are and the cells in your body what you think it should come to you like this yeah and if it doesn't that means there's a fear and it doesn't mean that there's a fear on a conscious level which is five percent sub oh sorry no worries. <laughs> so I'm very with my no, hands. No, I know. Same. A lot of people are. <laughs> no. We always smack it. 
subconscious is 95% of it, mm-hmm. right? So your DNA, intergenerational trauma. So it's not just positive stuff like your hair color, your eye color, your personality that gets coded in the DNA. It's also trauma. Yep. So, um, so what I was saying, so the, the fears are there and basically what it is, it's negative, positive, positive, negative, and the wires are crossed and it's just about uncrossing the wires and teaching the brain, Hey, these gifts over here, you can have it with that positive thing that you really want. And we can let go of this really nasty thing without the fear. We're going to lose these gifts. Or we're going to become this person on this side. Wow. Mm -hmm. So there's an uncrossing that happens. Um, But, and that's why beliefs don't leave unless you have uncovered all the ways it serves you and all the fears that are attached. And they might not be your fears. They could be subconscious. Yeah. uh, You know, up to seven generations back, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It lives like I'm learning that through breath work, like getting into the subconscious through breath work and yeah. deprogramming the fears and the stories that we create. Like we we don't even realize that we have these traumas. We have these sexual traumas as child or physical traumas or whatever it is. Our stories and like how we show up Negative are belief systems, all literally of it. programmed from our subconscious and we're having these reactions out of our subconscious and we don't even realize that we're acting that way. Yeah out of our fear from our trauma yeah yes just happened to me last week (laughs) literally it's crazy when something triggers you 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 are so quick to believe the fear loop that's running through your head I feel like and it was really hard for me to snap out of it and thank god I did but it's like those negative belief systems that we have about ourselves if one little thing triggers me which I'm obviously working with like an EMDR therapist and trying all these different, like I'm, I'm down for all of it too, you know, like definitely going to be contacting you to try theta healing. Cause that's incredible. But it's like the same thing. It's like, we're trying to rewire the way that we believe how we are with ourselves, even just the way that I speak to myself, because I am the queen of a downward spiral, like straight up. If I tell myself something, I'm very good at believing it. And so same thing goes for positive. If I tell myself I'm going to have a good day, like I, I know for a fact I'm a super attractor. So if I'm in a fucking downward spiral and I'm going through shit, it's like everything around me. If I can't pull myself out of it, it's fucking downhill, like just downhill so bad. That's the hardest thing as well I say about theta healing or anything it's not the modality or the method itself. The hardest thing is knowing you're triggered. Yeah. Actually pressing pause, right? Do you remember to press pause in those moments? And I'll give you a really simple example that happened to me recently. So we've got two cars right between my husband. We've got a car each basically. And um, I work from home and my car wasn't working. I don't know what was going on, the battery or something, right? Um, no big deal. I'm pretty much at home. I work from home. Don't need to go anywhere. There wasn't anything I was going to miss. And I had been eating really well. All of a sudden this day, I'm just like munching. I'm really munchy. And I'm like, I've been really, really eating well for the last two weeks. Why am I craving? Why am I feeling so munchy? And I didn't feel upset. I was having a good day, positive, nothing bad happened. And just feel snacky, right? Most of us would just dismiss that. Like, oh, you just feel like chips today. You know, no big deal. However, because it was something I'd been working on, it was different and unusual. I closed my eyes and I just, I tuned in and I was like, why do I want the chips today? What's going on? And when I gave myself that moment of silence, what I realized was I actually feel trapped. It's not that I want to go anywhere, but that I can't because the car's not working. Mm. And it's not even like it seems superficial, but it's deeper than that no. because I was trapped at home with an abusive father, right? And that's where the trigger is. But yeah. in my present reality, it's so small. And I, you know, I've trained myself to pick up on that. But most of us don't realize when we're triggered because it can be that small. Hmm. That's wild. 
I do that I'm, too because I never snack and sometimes I'm like, wow, I'm really snacky and I go eat like the whole yeah. and it's not just because I'm high either. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's <laughs> actually just you just saying that is like insane to me because that just ha- my therapist was the one who pointed it out to me. She said, I don't think you realize, but everything about this certain situation that had happened last week was so parallel to your abuse, like in every way, just like and until she pointed that out to me. I couldn't, I couldn't comprehend it and I couldn't wrap my head around it. And I was having this like fear loop running through my head thinking my, like my life was over. Cause like I couldn't snap out of it. Like I'm talking like four or five days of straight panic attacks. Like couldn't snap out of it. And, um, as soon as she said that to me, like literally it just like clicked. And then I sat with it that night and I woke up the next morning, like a different person than I was like the four previous days she was like you were literally so triggered to the point of like living in fight or flight that you couldn't you couldn't snap yourself out of it until you either realized it or made yourself believe that like you're safe and everything's fine like you were literally just like stuck in this fear loop and I I really was like it was crazy and looking back on it now it's like funny and I'm like oh my god I'm such a fucking psycho but I'm like no I was actually just so triggered and didn't realize it Mm. And that's incredible mm. that you say that. That's so crazy. And I just want to say, what, what's wrong with being a fucking psycho? Oh, no, I mean, <laughs> my husband fucking loves me regardless. <laughs> Bless him. You know, I think like... Me too. I love you regardless. <laughs> yeah, I love you. Unconditional, right? We just got to find those people that like... Yeah. I always say it and I've said it for years, right? Like our people are our people with our demons play well together. Right, because yeah. like we all have it, we all have the dark side, we all have the things, we all do fucked up shit. The human experience is fucking wild. We all cause harm to people. We all make mistakes. Like oh. nobody's fucking perfect on this road, right? And like, and then everybody tries to put levels on the mistakes. Like, oh, you did that, and it's way worse than me doing this to the to you. It's like no pun. It's all the same. Yeah. Right. Like we're all just like, why do we have to? put a disconnect on it just like move past it heal it like understand that you aren't going to do it again do your best to not do it again right do our best it's always like the four agreements right if we just do the best we can most recently i just like like obviously the four agreements like i read it like years ago right but i listened to it i was on a plane and i like listened to it and like heard it and it was like i heard It was like I had a spiritual experience around like re-listening to that because now and I'm like so it's like so much more like aware like the assumptions like the how like the programming like all the things we're talking about and I'm just always like God if everybody just operated that way life would be a little (laughs) bit better so much easier stop yeah. making assumptions right mm. and like people are like unwilling to have clear direct communication on things that are happening they hear things from other people and then that triggers their own fear in their subconscious like mm-hmm. from their own trauma that has nothing to do with the person that's doing the thing and they like create a story out of an obs- uh, like an assumption out of their programming and then it's often off to the circus <laughs> I think it also starts with you starting to accept yourself and Mm -hmm. accepting the psycho in you and all versions of you because others can't accept us until we accept ourselves. And, you know, even with the healing, I'm learning to like heal and like move through the triggers and everything, but also understanding that I'm not going to be able to eliminate the dark side of me. I'm not going to be able to eliminate every single negative emotion. Like that's not part of the human experience. And we're here to experience 50% of the emotions I'm going to feel are going to be positive. Ecstasy, pleasure, joy, happiness, you know, and 50% of it is going to be negative. It's going to be depression. It's going to be, I hate myself. It's going to be psychotic. It's going to be rage. And, and you know what, we need to start with accepting that and trying to, you know, minimize and like, uh, not allow it to rob us. So when we're feeling those emotions and depression and sadness, feel them, honor them. And then 
when you feel joy or something happy happens to you, what happens is because we experience that and because we shame ourselves for the negative, we rob ourselves from the joy. Mm -hmm. And children are really good at this. So in the classroom, I've seen so many kids you know, like five-year-olds who will be hating on each other, bite each other, pull each other's hair or whatever. I hate you or you looked at me the wrong way. And then five seconds later, they're best friends yeah. and they're playing. Yeah. Why don't we do the same? Yeah. Seriously. Like yeah. let it go. And when I'm in the positive, I'm going to fully lean into it and allow myself to experience that. And when I'm in the negative, I'm going to honor that. And I'm going to feel that as well. And that does not make me a failure. And I'm not supposed to shame myself for it and shame others for either. I literally on Saturday laid in bed all day long. I cried all day long. It was my daughter's uh, senior prom. I had friends come over they sat there they like let me cry I literally was like am I gonna make this am I gonna die do I want to die I'm so in so much pain and I felt pain all day on Mm. Saturday all day and there was no shame and my friends hugged me and they helped me get dressed and they like brought me and I showed up and I took pictures when I needed to do what I needed to do because like whatever but I got right home and they brought me soup and I laid in bed and literally laid in like that. I don't feel shame about that. And then Sunday, I kind of had like an emotional hangover. And then today, like I kicked, I kicked today's ass and just like, you, you know, did. showed up. Yeah. I had like a straight purge last week too. <laughs> Must have been in the air. I swear <laughs> to God. That new moon energy was a little wild. Yeah. But even, even not energetically, right? Like we can blame it on these things or like blame it on the moon or blame it on like the Mer- Mercury retrograde or whatever, but it just is like fucking life happens, yeah. right? And there's like a lot of shitty shit going on in the world and like energetically and collectively. And honestly, I've been giving and giving and giving and like I'm not the greatest at like filling up my own cup. You know, and like I have to be aware of that. And there's been so many changes in my life and so many things happening. But in me doing that and allowing myself to do that, I'm making these connections that like I'm not going like I'm meeting new people that are filling my cup. So Sunday there was a woman's circle at Unified Creature, this woman, Darcy, my friend, Kaylin. Kaylin's been on the podcast. Kaylin was, you know, one of the people that came over and just like held space for me because I have beautiful women in my life like that. Right. And I went to a woman's circle and it was like a two and I like looked at the time and it was two and a half hours. I was like, oh, my God, like, am I going to be OK? Am I going to make this? <laughs> am I going to make it? Two and a half hours. Like I was on my motorcycle. I was like, it was nice out. I was like, I think I'd kind of rather be doing that. And I was just like, nope, I'm going. And to, like it was it was four women, five women. It was super intimate. It was so beautiful. We talked about femininity and moving slow and talking about the divine mother and like how if a mother's thriving, like the world is thriving, right? Like, like it was just so exactly what I needed to hear and so exactly like met new women that I just cried in front of and they held space for me and nobody said anything. I just talked and nobody gave me advice nobody said anything they just allowed me to be so vulnerable and open and just that was it they didn't even like hug me or anything it was just they held a container for me to be my authentic self in my messy fucking emotions and like that's what we need yep that's it that's what we need that's beautiful i love that so much that is exactly what we need we just just need need space we need space. A container to process our own shit and yeah. people to be like, I see you and you're not alone. And I fucking love you no matter how messy your shit is. I know. Because everyone's got messy shit. And if we had more places and spaces like, you know, this place and like her space that like people could just. I love messy. I love the messy because the world is right. Like. Yeah. Love the messy. Yes. We love we love the messy dark shit. Yeah. Like no surface level here, 
right? Like, fuck that shit. It's not getting us anywhere. It hasn't gotten us anywhere. Our our parents' generation, that's what they did. It was everything fucking face. Put a fucking face on. Everything looks good on the yeah. outside. Like, it's all good. Like, no, like, we're not. That's, it's, and now look at what we have. Yeah. I'm um, still not good at, at accepting that, though, sometimes about myself. Like, that is one thing that I still need to do a lot of work around. It's just, like, accepting and allowing myself to be in that mind, mm. mind space. Yeah. We can't live there, right? Like, no. that's not attainable, right? We do no. have to, like, show up and suit up. But and- even when I have, like, the bad days or the panic attacks or the anxiety attacks, like, I am so hard on myself. And I think I noticed that about myself last week, just the way I was talking to myself in those moments. Like... I wasn't allowing it. Like, I kept being like, what's wrong with you? Like, what are you doing? Like, your life is so good. Snap the fuck out of it. Like, what are you doing? You know, like, and now looking back, it's like, okay, those are things I still hold shame around. Like, I need to let some of that stuff go. Like, I need to just allow myself to, in my mind, I feel like I have to be, like, happy all the time, which is so unrealistic, right? Like, it's okay to have bad days, but I carry so much shame around, Like, I'm always, like, the preacher of, like, girl, it's okay to have a bad day, right? Like, I'm Mm. always, like, just have a bad day. But whenever I'm having a bad day, it's, like, oh, my God, what's wrong with me? Something's wrong with me. Like, what the fuck is going on? I'm depressed again. Like, what's going on with me? Like, no, like, it's okay to just have a bad day or a bad week. Like, some people, you know, like, I had a bad week, but I snapped out of it. And now I'm just, like, listening to you two, I'm, like, wow, like, I need to change the way I talk to myself when I'm in those moments and when I'm in those spaces because I can be so very hard on myself when I'm in that downward. I wonder if we can even change the language instead of saying it's something that we need to snap out of. Mm. You know, even just saying that if there's a shame of it, it's like, come on, you've got to recover quickly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Language is important. Yeah. And especially to self. Because, like, you know, I can be so kind to everybody else. But, like, the shit I say sometimes, I'm like, wow, I would fucking beat somebody up if they said that to me. Right? Like, what? Like, it's, like, wild. But that's, like, the healing journey. Right? Like, we've got to just stop living in our stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let go of the stories, for sure. So I recently, and just, I don't know, I should have probably put tissues just in case. Mm -hmm. Um, I lost my cat. um, Mm, Sorry. A couple of weeks ago now. And she was an older cat. Uh, We found her on the street, like, um, and we took her in. Uh, We did try and see if she had an owner or anything like that. And um, we ended up sort of stuck with her (laughs) Uh, or she chose us. And she was an older cat, as I said. 12 13 years old um estimated age and so she was sort of like unhealthy end of life and so we had her for about three years and then we lost her and I started like why why did you come into my life (laughs) why if it was only for three years why did you pick us why were you here what was the reason of it and I was really in the grief of it and I've got a kitten as well who I absolutely adore and he's a year and a half and I've probably got a good 10 15 20 years with him right (laughs) I'm already afraid of losing him Mm. because of this grief and so I've been asking these questions oh I feel really heavy. Um, And one of the things that sort of came to me in this process was, you know, as I I was talking about the columns, right, how the negative things got positives. And grief is just a reflection that you lost something that you really loved. It was something really important to you. And if I didn't care about her that much, I probably wouldn't be hurting, right? Mm. And when we, we're manifesting, we're calling in things and the life that we want to live and our dream guy and our dream everything. And But the thing is, you're going to lose everything. It's inevitable. Mm. 
whether it's a divorce or a breakup or it's death it's inevitable everything you have in your life your friends your lovers your car your house you know your crystals whatever it is you're going to lose everything Mm -hmm. it's inevitable and are you prepared to say goodbye to that Mm. oh so it's easier to just manifest the average love let me just bring it along. Why would I get someone? Why would I call in someone who treats me so well and is amazing and I thrive because inevitably I'm going to have to say goodbye to him. Yeah. And so, and we have, you know, DNA ancestors of memories of the pain and the grief that they experienced when they lost their loved ones. And that's coded in us. And that's a oh big God, part of the chills. fear, right? So, let's you know i'm manifesting the love of my life but my subconscious is like no 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 stick stick with average because (laughs) you're not going to lose yourself you're going to be able to recover you'll be able to move forward you're not going to wish that you die right be in deep depression from losing the best thing ever and so i'm like okay my cat i think she's allowing me to practice sitting and being present with my grief and when I need to cry I cry and when I need to talk about her I talk about her and you know what I am I am strong enough I am willing to sit in the grief of how much I loved her and yes universe give me bigger things to cry about bring me the love of my life bring me big things I can recover from it I can sit in my grief to to try and heal it away or to remove it it's just that's really a dishonor to to the these amazing things right i've never thought about it that way that's incredible so her death was really this awareness came from her passing you know these huge gifts i've received from her and i'm like i'm grateful i thank you still hurts yeah Mm. sorry and this is like the fear of losing my kid. Oh, I'm going to get attached to him for the next 10 years. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then I have to say goodbye to him one day. Is that? Am I going to live my life in the fear of that? In the fear or sh- loop. Right. Or should I just embrace his love, his greatness and how amazing he, he is and um, allow for other great things to enter my life and... Oh, and and start to build this community and people who will listen to me, who won't give me advice and why don't you try this or you should not be crying two weeks later or a month later or five years later or whatever it is and calling in that soul family who understands that healing's not linear. No. And just because I feel good now doesn't mean from a month from now I'm not going to feel like I've gone backwards. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. And I'm not going to shame myself for wherever my emotions are with it. I'm going to honor all of my emotions, all of the positives. I'm going to feel ecstasy all the way. I'm going to feel love all the way. And I'm going to feel depression all the way. Am I willing to do that? Am I willing to feel grief all the way? Mm-hmm. And you I'm know what? So I am. I want the full human right experience. Now. Yeah, I'm having like so many moments in my mind right now where I'm just like oh my god oh my god oh my god well grief is forever like grief is forever yeah like there is not a time that you like are gonna think about the person that you not love that you lost and not feel some sign of sadness that they're not here in the physical presence but it's like in the remembering them we keep them alive and we feel the joy that they created in our lives if we fully accept the pain that it was to not have them in the physical presence. And that's everything, like, in a relationship or, you know, whatever it is. Like, we just have to fucking fully feel. Yeah, literally one of my biggest fears is losing. Me and my husband lost our first dog, so we got another dog. And my and my son came, you know, shortly after that. And, um, or before, I forget. Maybe we had Kanan before that. But either way, we have a beautiful German Shepherd. And in my mind, I'm so morbid. I'm like dude, when my son's 10, I'm going to be putting my dog down and my son is going to lose his best friend. And I'm like, now that you have just said this to me, it's like, I'm going to just appreciate the moments that they have together and I'm going to 
watch that relationship flourish because they are like this. They really are him and my son and my daughter. Like, and so instead of living in this, oh my God, how am I going to explain to my 10 year old son that his best friend's gone one day? I'm going to help him remember. And it makes sense good. why we numb ourselves, right? And how we keep ourselves yeah. small. Don't be too great. Don't be too amazing. Right? Yeah. Because then it hurts when we're not that, when we lose wow. that. So I'm going to be, I'm going to like allow my greatness and celebrate it. And then, you know, next week I'm going to be a mess and like, hey, can you help me out? Mm. I need some support because I feel like I'm this big. I don't feel worthy today. That's my struggle, right? Because the majority of the time in my life, I am like a presence and like, I'm, you know, doing the things that I need to do and I'm out healing the people that I need to heal because that's like where my heart is because I've been so low for so many years of my life. I was so low. So mm. I know now that people can heal. So I just want to fucking shout it from the rooftops and I'm in rehabs and I'm in detoxes and I'm like doing all these things and I'm here and I'm whatever I can, right? But then I like, I'm like, when I'm having days like I had on Saturday, I'm like, this isn't allowed. Like, why? How can I hold myself to this like high standard of like being this, you yeah. know, thing that I do? And I hate like, you know, saying I'm a healer, you know what I mean? Because my job, I'm not a healer, right? Like my job is to empower you to heal yourself like that's the only yeah. thing like I've healed myself enough to know that we are so fucking powerful as human beings and we've been taught that we aren't and that we can't yeah. so I know that my inner healer fucking got me through a hundred percent of the worst days that I never thought I was gonna get through and here I am sitting here doing this shit so when I have moments where I'm like in fetal position, like, oh my God, do I just want to end it? Because this doesn't seem right. Like I'm literally being attacked from every angle and it doesn't make logical sense. And I can't wrap my head around it. And I'm like trying and I'm trying to just like show up and like fucking clench my fists some days and be like, but I'm dying inside, literally fucking dying inside. And it's just like more recently where I'm like, fuck it. If I want to lay in bed all goddamn day and do nothing but fucking cry and like call my friends and be a sad sack. <laughs> and be like, why me? It's what the hell? This is bullshit. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's it. nothing wrong with that. As long as I'm doing it because I need to, because I am experiencing these high highs. And then we have like society's idea. It's like, oh, she's manic because she's so high, high and she's so low, low. It's like, no, that's fucking bullshit. No, I'm not. Right? Yeah. Like, and everybody wants to put a label on it. Like, right. it's like wrong to feel everything so deeply. That's my thing. I enjoy the human experience and I love feeling because I've learned that I have to feel to heal. So I can't just be happy and feeling and being like, oh, I can only feel these amazing emotions and uh, feel all goodness all the time and all joy. No, that's like you're saying, that's not it. It's 50%, 50-50. Yeah. And I think I live way more of like an 80-20, like 80% of the time, like I'm living real high and like everything's great because like universal yeah. law and like I'm giving back so much. So like my energy is so great because I meet beautiful people and I'm around beautiful people who are reciprocating my good energy and I'm, I've literally cut out any fucking bullshit. I have zero tolerance for bullshit. If like you can't like be leveling up with me, like I'm done, like it's fine. And I used to say it's, like, a toxic trait to, like, cut people off that, like, were in my life for, like, a long time. But I don't feel that way anymore. I just literally am protecting my energy and I have clear fucking boundaries. And if you can't support me and, like, who I am and what I'm doing and my mission and all the things and you can't see who I actually am at a core level, then bye. <laughs> see you later. Go find somebody else. I've got plenty of people, and the universe will literally bring them into circles. Like, if you can't come with me, like, it's the second that, that I make that shift of, like, releasing that energy, the most beautiful people come into my life. And that has been proven over and over and over again, and I'm okay with that. That is huge what you just said there. It's huge because people get stuck in that fear, right? So we're like, I can't take that step until I feel secure. But it's no, you have to take that step. Before. And then the universe will mirror that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
it's like, ah, oh, where did I read it? Someone had said like, you know, when you look in the mirror and you're trying to change the man in the mirror and make the person in the mirror smile, you're like, I'm not going to smile until you smile. And, and it's not going to smile, right? You have to smile first and then the reflection in the mirror smiles. So the universe is just a reflection of our inner world. Wow. Mm-hmm. So when you say no to toxic people, the universe hears that. It doesn't hear what you wish. Yeah. It, it, it hears your actions, where your emotions are, where you're investing your energy. And it's like, okay, she's investing her energy in people who support and nourish her. Mm. The universe is literally going to mirror that for you. Yep. And Get it has back. every single time. And sometimes we're like so attached to these like things or these people. We're like, well, I really just envisioned you being in my life forever. And I loved you so much. And like all these like weird it's attachments. Right. But yeah. like if it's like it's not working, it's not working. Cool. Like it's like the it's like the five year olds. Right. Like fucking fight it out. And like, cool. If we like can't figure it out, like we don't have to figure it out. We don't have to, we we're adults now. So we can choose to just like, you know, part ways and figure it out life I really um I loved what you said earlier and I want you to mention it before we wrap this up soon but about how our own Mm. voice is our own healer because you said that you couldn't get used to hearing yourself in the headphones like this and I think that was really special and important so I want you to yeah say that again for the listeners well this was really strange (laughs) (laughs) putting my headphones on and then hearing my voice and um just really strange and many of us don't like the sound of our own voice yeah and I read a paper once and they said that um you know sound healing has been scientifically proven and different hertz and frequencies and the positive impact that it has on our body Mm -hmm. and this article had said that the most healing sound on the planet is the sound of your own voice Mm. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I still can't get over that. I'm the like, sound, what? <laughs> the sound of your own voice is prescribed medicine for your own body. And we do it instinctively, right? So when we've had a rough day and we come home and we sit on the couch, we're like, Ugh. like <laughs> we are releasing. We're like trying to get the energy out. We're shaking off the day. Mm. We're trying to move it. And imagine if you did it on purpose. Imagine what you could release if you did it on purpose. Like, okay, I've got to get this day out of me. And it's like, oh, uh, and just like allow yourself to tone. Wow. And it's so, it really, I've done it and I feel so much lighter. And I just tone and tone and tone until I feel finished and complete. I'm like, I feel better now. What about even just, like, recording a script on your phone? Like, say I, like, grab my phone one day when I'm having a good day and I record record a script to myself for when I'm going through, like, a panic attack or an anxiety attack or having those bad days and I just listen to it. Like, remember. Wow. I love that. Like, I think is that's that, great. Would that be, like, the same thing or are you talking more of, like, a vibrational tone, like a, like a, hmm, like a, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like an ohm instead of like your actual words and and yeah I think they're both equally as powerful because even if you're hearing it on your phone it's still putting out a frequency into the universe Mm. there's still vibrations being sent out intentions I'm gonna do it and I think too like that's why we ohm right like that's why we ohm in yoga and me I'm such an advocate like you know because you come to my classes it's always we're sighing we're lifting up rising up audible exhales like i'm always cueing people to make noise booty it's like we're yelling like i'm always like ay, ay, ay. i'm like it's like my biggest thing to like make people use their voice yeah. because we just need to feel so empowered in using our own voice and it's even like this this like i would just be like oh i sound like a chipmunk or whatever like anytime i was like here and and i'm taking i've i have i've 
I like sign up for all these things, right? But I'm starting to take this course that like everybody can sing, like everybody has an inner voice and like you just have to find it. But we've been programmed to believe that we don't sound good because we sound different than everybody else. But if you can like connect in to know that your inner voice is like in your belly and how you breathe and different breathing techniques that create the different sounds, you can actually create a sound that sounds good to you mm. and it's um those people who say that they're not meditators i say just do an om once a day and tick it off and tell your brain i'm a meditator i did a 10 second om and build those synapses in the brain and like tick it off i meditated today because i did an om yeah wow i love that too even like brushing your teeth like it's like the basic mindfulness things like taking a shower like being in the shower shaving your legs instead of being like oh my god I have to do this this and this after my shower or I'm brushing my teeth like I'm thinking about what I'm packing for my lunch you know whatever it is like yeah just those simple mindfulness practice you can say you're meditating that's what I say to the people like mundane tre- routine yeah yeah I say to the kids in treatment like I'm like if you guys because they because I bring the sound bowls in there and like the meditation where I'm just like these are basic things that you can do to get in your body, right? Because that's your thing. You just have to get into your body and out of your mind and, like, be present in the moment. This was incredible, truly. I want to thank you for your courage and bravery and just being like, yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. Because we were planning on going real deep tonight, and I don't think we're either of us are in the mindset to be. I feel like that. people say that about me a lot, that it, it's just like I ask something and people are like, yeah, yeah. I'll fucking do it. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, sure. I yeah. don't know why I'm doing it, but it's just like, I'm like, yeah, you want to do this thing? And people are like, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm so, that's exactly what I did. I'm so surprised I said yes. I'm so surprised you said yes. I totally thought you were going to be like, no. Right. I know. We just finished a yoga class, sweaty. You know, I'm like, uh, you know, I'd like to wear nice Caught clothes, yeah. and, you know, and, and all the things. But I, um, I'll i just share this one thing. I've been really consistent with my meditation practice. Like I just I'm so devoted to it. And I am a terrible meditator. I'm really bad at it. Right. Whenever I, I do guided meditations and I... Most of the time, I'm not even listening, right? I'm like falling asleep in the middle of the meditation. I'm distracted. I'm doing the to-do list. I'm all over the place, right? Yeah. I rate myself a 0.5 out of 10 on how good I am at meditating. <laughs> Same. However, what I have realized of months of meditation practice consistently is changing my life. Mm-hmm. Mm. it really is changing my life and I was like I don't have to turn up a 9 or a 10 out of 10 I can literally turn up a 0.5 and it's still going to change my life mm-hmm. yep. it's not about how well you do it it's about being consistent yeah and That's so exactly right I think I just gave myself a huge permission I was just like you know what I'm just gonna do it <laughs> just do it I love the, the vid- idea of the ohm I'm just going to start doing that at first because, my God, I have the hardest time meditating. Well, that's the thing. And everybody convinces yourself in the second you put that energy out there, you're convincing yourself that you can't do it, yeah. right? Because it's the same. The Vedic meditation that I practice the two times a day, 20 minutes a day, it's like rest. And, like, you know, and some majority of the times I really can only get one in in the morning and I do my morning routine with my breath work. And it's, like, life-changing. It's literally and – that's, and that's what happens is – I get in those days like I had on Saturday when I'm like out of my routine. I'm not going to the gym. I'm like not because mm. like I need routine and structure. I really do. It's really important for me as a human being to have that right now because there's like so many other things going on. So meditation is definitely a life changer. And it's also just the thought of like, okay, I'm giving my body this time to actually connect mind, body, spirit in wholeness, in oneness, and just honoring that, even if it's for a few minutes a day, and that's the greatest gift that we can give ourselves. Oneness and wholeness and those moments of stillness where it's mind-body connection can literally, it's the greatest gift we give to our body. And like when we start making those subconscious changes for ourselves, for our body, we show up differently in the world because we're like, holy shit, like I am whole, like I am a whole human being and I'm doing these things to show gratitude to my body. 
yeah. my spirit, my mind. Because it's really the mind, right? We gotta yeah. give it a break. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love you. So I know. family. Thank you. This has been so incredible, like so informative, so eye opening for me. I feel like I had so many light bulb moments and I'm gonna leave here better than when I came. And I'm really grateful for that. And if there's one thing Wait one second. Also before that, um, Amna is going to be doing these workshops here at the studio called Manifestation Workshops, like Theta Healing, like all the things. So we're gonna link it and next month she's gonna get one on the schedule and we'll have a manifestation cool. game, right? It's called the manifestation game. Yes. And I'm very excited. Wait, to- what are you doing Friday? night oh um the women's circle right would you like to lead it oh (laughs) is this an are you gonna give me two opportunities in one night (laughs) but like really yeah i mean we yeah some if you needed the women's circle though if you like needed it i also don't want to like take that from you so let's let's sit on that and i think also the women that have probably already signed up are looking for the women's circle oh no we fucking spring shit on them oh do you (laughs) so our women's circle we talk about this all the time we start we we were at this thing in in the beach and we jumped in the ocean and we just i came out of the room and i'm like we're starting a podcast and we're doing a woman's circle I got, like, I don't know. We just have to do it. As soon as we get back, we have to start a podcast and we have to start a woman's circle yep. in the studio. And we did it. We just, it was like, I was like, we're doing it. And we did it. Because <laughs> it was no just like. No real, like, schedule or nothing. idea of, like, what it was going to look like. But we knew we needed some type of community. And so everyone that we've had, we've had two. And each one was kind of just like a whatever came to us, came to us. And kind of just like whatever happened, happened. And the last one, I don't know if you heard, was the ecstatic dance, and nobody knew that that's what they signed up for. And so they came, and they were like, what the fuck are we doing? And they left way better than when they came, and every single one of them was so happy that they stayed and just did it. Um, so we pull people out of their comfort zones. We're like, yeah. huh, surprise, So not even trying to like put you on the spot, but if that's something that you're oh. free and would love to do, like we would love to have you, a manifestation workshop would be... Yeah. Incredible. Well, I mean, I signed up for it, so I know I'm available that night. <laughs> <laughs> I love that even more. Yeah, I love that. If you feel like you just want to participate the first one, that's totally cool, too. We have them, obviously, monthly, and uh, we would love for you to host one at one point because that's another thing that we've been wanting to do is, like, getting more women to come in and host these different type of, types of things because, obviously, me and Aim can't do it. I mean, we could do it every single time, but I would love to share other people's special gifts our goal is to empower other women yeah right because like it's not about us like it's just like really like shut my thing like it's not about me i'm not a healer my thing is to show you how fucking powerful you actually are every single human being needs to know that they have everything that i have in me to like do this like everything everything that you see in me that you want you fucking have it yep yeah you know like anything that anybody sees in anybody else and anybody else in the world, you have it. Yep. It's yours if you want it. Just go get it. Go do it. Yeah. So that's the goal of the woman's circle. So if you do, that would be great. But if, you know, but also we are going to hold one at Sacred Moon that's going to be open to the public too because we're going to, we're working on it. There's a lot of fun things happening in the studio. I'm really like the studio is making a huge shift in like just collective healing and like I'm like calling in all partners and people to like help me because I don't want to do it alone and it's not meant to be done alone this is a community this is sacred community and like the community is going to lean on each other and like help the community support this space so it stays here yeah to do its job I love that oh I love that so much (laughs) yeah me too it's the mission so with that being said no pressure but um, if there's one thing, one important takeaway that you want our listeners to hear from tonight, like one one really important thing that you want them to leave with, what would it be? Mm, so many things, right? Mm. So many things. I think for me, the most important thing is just like accepting yourself wherever you are. Mm. And for me, it's very important just accepting that you're going to have negative emotions and accepting that and embracing them and befriending them yeah and doing that for your friends as well right and turning up for them not giving them advice and just loving on them and 
it's also very important that you do that and you fall apart in front of your friends because you're giving them a huge permission slip as well so instead of isolating create the community you want yeah find the people you want because we cannot do it alone and we cannot just rely on one best friend we cannot just rely on our spouse Mm -hmm. we cannot just rely on our boyfriends that's not enough you are you're not going to be able to do it you need family soul family community family yeah yeah, so family. Which is why I'm so, so in love with, you know, what's going on here in this space. And I'm just so excited to be offering here as well because it, you know, what your mission is, is very much in alignment to what I believe yeah. and the world that I want to live in and create for myself as well. Because yeah. I need support too. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's why we did it. That's why. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Love yeah, it. Like, all right. I can only We're all here. here. <laughs> Me too. I'm like faking it over here. <laughs> all right. We end the same way we started. We really just drink it all in, right? Feel it all. And place one hand on the heart, one hand on the belly. Breathe in through the nose. Lift up. Rise up. And exhale the bullshit. You guys have a great Thank was, you so much. Yeah, thank you. I was going to say have a great night, but you listen to it in the morning, the night, yeah. who knows? I don't know. Have a good Wednesday. Love you all. Love you all. Boop. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen to what we have to say. It means the world. As always, we want to end this episode by reminding you that we are not medical professionals and we are not giving any type of medical advice. We are simply sharing our experience and solutions. We are here with the intentions of reminding you that you are never alone and that everyone's healing journey is unique to the individual. Make sure to follow us on all social media platforms to stay updated. Stay well, sacred rebels. See you next time.